I thought, okay, suffer meaning, oh, ouch. I didn't mean know that it really meant suffer. Like, whoa, like knocked off of your feet, blow in the chest, suffering. welcome back to our channel um i know i've been gone for the past week but maybe the week and a half but a lot has been going on and so i just wanted to take a break focus on what i needed to focus on and yeah so <laughs> so if you can tell by the title of this video it's basically about suffering as a christian and how suffering is a part of christianity it's a part of our walk with christ and kind of just coming up here just to share a few things that i'm learning through it um that i'm learning about suffering with christ and suffering in a uh, response to asking god to use me to love people but not really understanding that what understanding what that entails so let me back up a little bit so when i came um when I first started like reading my Bible and even walking with other people concerning uh, the word and what Christianity looks like uh, practically, um, I've always read scriptures about, you know, picking up our cross following Christ, how we're called to suffer alongside Christ, how um, it's just so it's just so many scriptures that talked about suffering. But um, I came to the realization just a few weeks ago, actually, that. I didn't really believe that he meant suffer <laughs> um and what I mean by that is that I thought okay suffer meaning oh ouch I didn't mean know that it really meant suffer like whoa like knocked off of your feet blow in the chest suffering um heartache suffering a uh, rejection suffering type of thing and what he's been teaching me just lately is how to love people and that love loving people requires suffering and or truly loving people the way God calls for us to love them requires suffering. There is no act of love without an act of sacrifice. And to be honest, Christ has been the amazing depiction of that because he gave of himself as an act of love towards us and so he calls for us to die also for our brothers for our sisters um that we may love them and so it's just been so recently that god has just been calling me to love sorry guys my camera had died but um what i was saying that god has really called me to love beyond my capacity of what i think that i'm able to give as a person who's called to love people who are our sinners including myself who are plagued by their own sin who are dealing with their own circumstances their own uh uh struggles in life and how he's calling me to love these people with such in such a way that it causes them to draw to him and for him to be glorified and so i was just thinking um one morning i was just thinking about suffering and how far-fetched it was in my mind in regards to loving people and how I was willing and I'm capable of loving people until they reach a certain point of sacrifice that it requires on my end and God really showed me my heart in that area how selfish I even was when it came to being able being able to bear with other people's sins and struggles and me depending on God and leaning into God to be able to love them through it and he put me honestly in, cer in certain circumstances where I had to come to him regarding loving him or not loving him but loving others and he showed me or reminded me um about what Christ had to endure in the Garden of Gethsemane and even um when he when I began to think on that thing it was actually a sermon that popped up about uh that John Piper did and I'll link it in the description box about Jesus taking that cup of suffering and drinking the cup of suffering and so what God was calling me to do was to drink the cup of suffering and I never really had to drink such a cup and then the amount of the cup 
um in my life and so it was i was called to drink a cup of suffering and what i mean by suffering it could be different for different people so suffering on my part is me showing love and being rejected me showing love and being abandoned or uh or 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 any type of um male response to me showing love and he was showing me that beyond even oh god this is good beyond the beyond the rejection and the pain and whatever i may receive on behalf of showing that love and being a the hands and feet of christ to someone that i'm still called to do it and that and that was a big eye wake eye awakener like i'm still called to suffer even though i may be it may be the very things that i that are deep in my heart that i'm so afraid of feeling does not negate me loving a person in a way that he calls me to love them and that when i'm obedient unto him in the way that he tells me to love and in the way that he tells me to spiritually fight and to fight uh to not fight things fleshly but as a as an act of love how glorified he is in it and that even when we uh are called or we're in certain circumstances where we are getting mistreated or we're getting hurt or we're getting we're, we're having all of these feelings that we don't want to feel um in response to us being loving um that does not negate that we're supposed to continue to be loving or that does not negate the fact that he is calling us to love um now of course take this in context of scripture and i'm not saying like you know domestic violence or i'm not talking about that but i'm talking about in regards to like what god has called for you to do for somebody so that could be somebody on your job that can be somebody that you're working with that has such a disdain for you because of the gospel and yet instead of treating them as they deserve or treating them as you think that they deserve you are continuously showing love in spite of you having to be the target for for their anger and God was just showing me like, I'm going to teach you how to suffer and I'm going to teach you how to suffer well. And so, and this is just like with different things in my life, like just teaching me how to suffer well and how it's suffering well. It doesn't just cultivate a love and an intimacy for that person to God, but it draws me so near to God because then I'm put in a position where I have to lean on him. I have to depend on him for me to be able to show love and to exhibit love and be the gospel to someone when they are not being the gospel to me or when they are not showing love to me and that by far y'all has been the hardest thing in my walk thus far walking with Christ is learning how to suffer well and praise be to God he has like shown himself mighty he has shown himself faithful in all the different circumstances that I've come across where I felt like this is going to require me to suffer because I may not be treated right I may not get love reciprocated but i'm still called to love and then knowing and trusting that the god of all comfort will comfort me in my afflictions or in the things that i'm hurt by not only just for me but so that i can help comfort those with that same comfort and knowing that he is more than able to keep me and to protect me and just thinking about all this like isaiah 41 10 like all of those scriptures that come to mind about how he that we don't have to fear we don't have to be dismayed that he is our god that he will uphold us in his hand that that when the righteous run into him he, they are safe so even even looking at scripture in that context of like when i am loving people and instead of love getting back i am being persecuted i can run into my strong tower and running into the strong tower which is the lord is not saying that i retreat and i don't love it's saying in that moment when i am getting my heart hurt or i'm getting my soul is getting hurt that i have someone who i can go to who can refresh my soul and can send me back out to continue to love so i don't have to keep getting hit keep getting hurt and getting things even sent by the enemy my way and be wounded i don't have to be wounded i can love and love and love and love sometimes till it hurts um till it hurts but knowing that it is sanctifying for me knowing that it's just an opportunity for me to dig into my god more and y'all i'm telling you i've never like <laughs> It's so funny because it's just like as soon as you think you understand something, he shows you that they're so it's he's so God is just so dynamic and we are so dynamic and he wants us to know and to learn how to suffer well with him. And the only way that we learn how to suffer well is to go through certain 
circumstances and situations in life where we have to suffer and in our suffering what does it produce and it produced sanctification it produced a new perspective of people it produced compassion it can it produced all of these fruits of the spirit that he wants in us but the issue is we run from suffering we run from pain we don't want to be like christ when he says not my will but yours be done and he drunk that cup of suffering he knew what he would have to endure the next 18 hours of his life excruciate in pain and then end up dying for a people who was spit on him who had beaten him who had turned their back on him who abandoned him who rejected him who were disloyal to him like he knew all of that and yet he drunk the cup because he knew what the overall goal was and so i my question is for you today what cup have you passed up? What opportunity have you passed up on loving someone because you were overtly concerned about how you were going to feel, about how you were going to be affected, that you did not obey God in loving that person in that circumstance? And I'm only here to say that because I'm going through it. Like I'm learning how to love, just love people genuinely and authentically and out of, and, and, and just learning how to suffer along with Christ. Like if Christ suffered, why why would i think that i wouldn't and why would i try to live a life avoidance of suffering when he's called me to it and i'm learning how beautiful suffering is because it cultivates something in me an intimacy with god like never before and so i i challenge you to just look over your life see what ways you prevented suffering for on your own accord where you prevented you know yourself from being annoyed with people or uh you don't want to be inconvenienced for people yet god called for you to be inconvenienced or god even says stand still stand to see my salvation even though the enemy he comes to and fro and he's sending darts through people at you he ain't he ain't saying like that it's not going to hurt or it's not going to affect you but he's saying that hurt will not in, in comparison to the glory that shall be revealed those afflictions are nothing they are minimal and that he can help you through it so i encourage you brother i encourage you sister i encourage you viewer look over your life have you suffered have you suffered for the sake of the of the gospel have you suffered for the sake of someone else and if you have now, I encourage you to go through the word, especially um, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. You know, I, I encourage you to go through the word and just see how Christ suffered for us and how our suffering isn't something that is like final. We have an eternity to look forward to. And so these, these sufferings and these afflictions are minor in comparison to the glory that shall be revealed. And so I'm so excited that I'm suffering. All right, we are at Burlington and we came to get something for the shower. And um, I think we got some nice selections. And then Sierra selected, um, well, we found a dress for the event for tonight. <laughs> it's just because we had to divide and conquer. Ticket. It's crunch time, but. Yeah, so far Burlington was a good move. Yeah, it's fine. All right, all right. Did you want to back? Um, yes. Well, can I please proceed to register too? Probably. I mean, you want to order that? Yeah. We'll see if they let you. I've never heard of that before. So I know I'm going straight to the gym. I'm like running late. Oh, that's why you wanted in the bathroom. If I could change, I would prefer to walk out in bed. Okay. A bag. I'm going to send you a bag. It's a good idea. Yeah. 